Crashing chords in a tightly packed rhythm with such harmonic complexity in a matter of four bars. We immediately hear a sort of orchestral foresight in this density, and fortunately for us, Ravel had indeed orchestrated this piece shortly after. Let's take a closer look at the first four bars. We can see that the chord is made up of fifths in the left hand, and fourths in the right hand. This chord is a particular one because it is clearly the tonic, since we have G in the bass, yet a sneaky E sharp gives it a colour approximating that of a G dominant chord. This E sharp then rightfully resolves to F sharp in the following chord. Here, the chord is stacked in thirds instead. And isn't it interesting how Ravel uses almost all the black keys on the piano, compared to all the white keys in the first chord? Perhaps it was just a brilliant stroke of genius while improvising on the piano. The D in the bass signifies the dominant chord, while the chromatic top half provides a harmonic crunch, further emphasizing the third beat of the bar. In the next bar, we have more or less the same concept. The first chord has fifths in the left hand and fourths in the right, with the right hand being shifted a step downwards. while the second chord takes it a step further by shifting an octave up and emphasizing a chromatic cluster in the notes C sharp, D, and E. As we can see, this passage is simply a tonic dominant, tonic dominant, but with very colorful harmonic extensions and chord spacings. A small side note on the rhythm which might have been inspired by Schubert's own set of Vals Nobel D969. Moving on, we're going to take a look at this small mischievous melody in the middle section. we immediately notice a sort of chromatic movement in the right hand. We can almost break up the melody into two distinct lines, which move in stepwise and mostly chromatic motion. The first line, and the second one, combine together to form one unity which makes for an interesting melody that moves in fourths and slides downwards before climbing back up. Looking at the left hand, we can deduce the harmony to be moving simply from a tonic chord to the dominant chord, and predominantly E major. The added sixth of the tonic chord, C sharp, replaces the 5th B to provide a different colour to the tonic chord, something that Ravel does quite often. We also notice a small chromatic line that passes from G sharp to F double sharp to F sharp, then back up. This further blurs the tonality between the major and minor mode, but we can eventually hear that the F double sharp simply acts as a chromatic passing note. A similar concept can be seen in the first movement of Ravel's Ma Mère Loire. Finally, we'll be analysing this short passage nearing the end, where we just have a string of chords in a gradual crescendo.
the first thing we notice is that the melody is simply a chromatic line upwards. While the bass is moving in the circle of fifths. What we then would have would be a different intervallic relationship between melody and bass. Perfect fifth, minor third, major seventh, which loops again every three chords. Ravel then fills out the harmony such that each chord becomes a seventh chord. We thus obtain the extended dominant seven chords. Minus seven chords. And major seven chords. This constant shifting of chord qualities makes for such a colourful and exciting passage. So that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. Do let me know what you think in the comments down below. And thanks for watching. Bye.